views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I want to welcome you to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Uh, and just say hello to Mr. Benny. Hello, Mr. Benny. What How- up? I know. You, you know the tagline, <laughs> what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? You know, that's been part of this since, like, what, forever? Don't, yeah. say, the, don't say the dinosaur. Age. We've said it quite a few thousand times on this, on this quite program. Quite a few so, thousand. Yeah, near, uh, not dinosaur age, though. Uh, that's just too far back. I, I know. Today's show with Rajiv is what that that tagline is all about it really is I, I mean and and what I mean when I say that and I'm going to introduce Rajiv to all of you in a minute um, when we are thinking about what would you knew what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail we're really talking to people and, and it's changed over the past 13 years right Benny you know there's a group of people that have a pretty good life and you're out in the world, you maybe have a job, you, you know, you maybe like have a family, a relationship. And so it has a different meaning for you than perhaps somebody that is really at a tough place in life. And there are many reasons to be at a tough place in life. If you're me and you're 17 years old, you're homeless. Um, if you're me and you're trying to get an undergraduate degree and it's taken you 13 years, there's something about the way that you learn that isn't like everybody else, okay? And so today's show is really about that. You know, it's about looking at our differences and really understanding that different doesn't mean less than. That is the theme for today. Different does not mean less than. And as we grow and change culturally, subculturally, educationally, you know, what are we discovering about the many faces of talent? What are we discovering about the 50 shades of amazement that we see in people? Well, today, I am so thrilled to be talking with one of the most incredible people that has been able to capture something that I've been passionate about, you all have been passionate about since almost the day of the inception of this show. The Odd Way Home was born, and it is a film, from a single moment of honesty and surprise from Rajiv. Several years ago, he was asked by a colleague to direct a documentary on families with autism. And I'm going to say at this point, because I want you all to hear what he has to say about it, the rest is history. Today, we get to talk with him about what this experience is like. You know, Rajiv and many of you may or may not know who he is. Um, I'm probably going to kill his last name, but I'm going to give it my best shot, uh, Nirmala Akandan. And I probably, if I said it faster, I would get it right. Rajiv, how did I do? 92% there. 92. So give us the full. First try. Give us the <laughs> full. Uh, go ahead. So it's Rajiv Nirmala Condon. 
Namalakandan. I got it now. Namalakandan. Yeah. And there's a very good reason why I mispronounce names. This will not be the first. It Not even necessarily. Because I'm one of these people. I'm a little bit different. But Rajiv is a writer, a director. And he's somebody that when you hear this show today, it goes beyond passion. Passion is going to be an understatement for what this film is all about, The Odd Way Home. And it's actually my pick for next month. You're going to see clips of it, trailers of it. We're going to have it on our website. We're going to be talking with all of you. We're going to take some of today's interview. We're probably going to, it. well, not probably, it automatically will be uploaded to YouTube because that's somehow that, you know, folks are doing. But this is really about having to take a look at something with a beautiful sense of humor, uh, an absolutely open heart, amazing characters the actors in this film which we'll talk about i don't want to give you too much about it because i want rajiv to talk about it. but the odds of people meeting each other that maybe most of us would think are different but meeting in a way where love gets to show up and so this amazing director you know whatever he has done whatever rajiv has done to create a film that's not only going to touch your heart, but it's going to open your mind so that you can be inspired. So maybe, maybe the next time someone comes into your presence that may be a little different, that maybe you look at and say, eh, they don't have much going on. Maybe you'll think again. Rajiv, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for, for joining us, and thank you for doing this film. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I uh, I look forward to sharing the story and telling you more about it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it. Um, you know, I know that each of us gets to be on a journey. I, I want to ask you a kind of different question, and I think most people ask you. I want to know what challenge and what obstacles that you personally overcame to bring you to this very moment, so that you can talk about this amazing film. What are some of the challenges? What are the obstacles? Well, you know, I, I was born in Sri Lanka, and I came to the United States uh, when I was uh, seven years old. So that itself, you know, I was uh, pretty much fish out of my own uh, sea. You know, I was uh, new. I was uh, in a whole new world. And I had to suddenly uh, make all these connections and uh, meet new people and learn a whole new culture. And um, I, knew how, uh, I, I knew I was different. So I knew that the world was seeing me differently, and I had to somehow cross through that shell and show them that, uh, you know, I can still have the same emotions and friendships and, and make these connections. At the same time, I was also, uh, due to uh, uh, premature birth, I have had some health issues all my life, and these have been struggles that I've had to deal with since I was a very young age, all the way through adulthood. And even a, a recent surgery just uh, several months ago, which was, um, you know, a spinal surgery, which was really intense. So I've always had that as a part of my life. And that's always been a struggle that I had to overcome, circumvent, and navigate around. And I always wanted to um, make sure that I didn't let that be a cause for me to uh, be derailed from what I wanted to do, uh, my dreams and my hopes and what I wanted to get to. Um, so I've always uh, pushed hard and really tried to not use that as a crutch to perhaps lower my expectations or change my plans. I, I usually push those things out of the way and keep moving forward. So when I, when I face any situation, I look at it as, you know, it's an opportunity to do the best I can with what I'm given. And, you know, a lot of what you said just now is speaks very true to me and to the film. So, you know, when I came over these two characters, uh, we have Maya, who is, uh, you know, just beaten down by life. She's, uh, you know, under the clutches of abuse and addiction and violence. And she's just a ragged, you know, beaten human being. And then we have Duncan, who has autism, and who's uh, just in his own little bubble, in his own little world, and uh, alienated from life, from the world. You know, no one really uh, knows what he's doing or where he's going. 
And we have these two people that are completely different in every which way possible. And I wanted to bring them together and show that they could uh, blossom this amazing friendship in a way that's really how every friendship should blossom. Because neither one of them judged the other for what they were, who they were from an external appearance. Duncan didn't care that Maya looks the way she does with bruises and, and she's angry and bitter and beaten. He doesn't care. He, this is just a new person that he gets to talk to. And uh, Maya meets Duncan and sees, well, he sees the world slightly differently. You know, there's something odd and different about him, but she doesn't really uh, care what he, you know, any sort of shortcomings he may have. So they both meet and embrace each other for the best traits that each one has to offer and build this friendship uh, on that stage. And they both flourish. They both blossom. And um, they don't let their hardships, their struggles get in the way. And, you know, they may not uh, excel to a certain level, but together, uh, in their own world, they're able to, by the end of the film, just find this amazing happiness. Yeah. I mean, one of the things you've talked about, we'll, we'll talk more about it when we come back, is, you know, what happens when we connect with our hearts? And what happens when sheer honesty shows up in the relationships we have and love comes to the forefront? When we come back, we'll talk about, you know, what is the state of affairs for autism right now? What do we know? What don't we know? And why is this film so very, very powerful? and inspiring so many people from a place of hope and from a place of action. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with the Dr. Pat Show. I got locked away and we lost it all today. Tell me honestly, would you still love me the same? If I showed you my flaws, if I couldn't be strong, tell me. The preceding audio was via a Skype call. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. My dream is to end homelessness. My passion is living a green life. My dream is to end poverty. My passion is volunteering. My passion is making a difference. My dream is to cure Lyme disease. My passion is rebuilding communities. My passion is helping those in need. My passion is caring for the elderly. My dream is to find a cure for cancer. My dream is to leave a better world for my children. We all have that special passion, that lifelong dream that drives us to live our lives with meaning and to create a better world. No matter what drives you, we can all make an impact. Dr. Pat Basile is helping others make their dreams come true so we can all help make our world a better world. To learn more about how Dr. Pat is building a community of sharing hope, strength, funds, knowledge, and information, visit abetterworldcrowdfunding.com today. That's abetterworldcrowdfunding.com. Become a self-actualized professional coach, mentor, and leader, and make your difference in the world. The Rainer Institute has trained people from four continents and is the top-rated accredited coach platform in the world. You'll learn skills from a program created by Mark Rainer as a result of 35 years of research as to what actually works for positive, lasting change. Come if you dare and give your life a chance at making the difference it so desires. Visit RainerInstitute.com to learn more. Do you want to transform your life's trauma and challenges into the gift that your life was meant to be? It's time for you to take control of your soul journey to heal, grow, and shine. Manifest your destiny with Wendy Wolf, soul transformer, energy, and psychic healer. To start your soul journey, contact Wendy at healgrowshine.com or email Wendy at wendy at wendyrwolf.com and start your adventure today. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? 
This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. The following audio is via a Skype call. Right, I'm on no. If I judge for life, man, would you stay by my side? Or is you gonna say goodbye? Can you tell me right now? If I couldn't buy you the fancy things in life, Shadi, would it be alright? Come and show me that you do. Wow, hey everybody, welcome back. It's great to have you join us here. I want to make sure you all uh, have the website. You're going to hear us talk about it a lot, probably looking at some of the Facebook posts we've done. Um, Next month, uh, September, you'll actually see us feature uh, the film throughout the month. Uh, Go to the, the, T-H-E, odd, O-D-D, way, home, dot com, the odd way home. Lots of information about it. Please support this film. Um, You know, and you'll find out why in a minute. Um, uh, from Rajiv why this is one of the most misunderstood and mishandled I believe now in today's world you know things that happen with autism and there are many faces of autism uh, that we'll talk about today but this film shines a light on a loving and kind and just sheer honest way that folks work with some of the most incredible challenges in one's life. You know, whether you're Duncan or you're another character in the film, Isla, what, it doesn't matter what, you, what role you relate to, we do not have to become our challenges, but sometimes we need help. Rajiv, thank you for joining us here today. Um, you know, let's talk about, if we could, the actors and the characters in the film for a minute. You know, we briefly okay. touched upon them. In, you know, I was thrilled, and I don't know how it came about, but the acting in this film is stellar. It is by far some of the best acting that I've seen in a long time. You know, from, uh, first of all, from, from, from young people, you know, in film. It's just gut-wrenching. But the other thing is that the message and the way that they're acting conveys the truth. I'm telling you, I was totally convinced that those two folks that play those two roles were it. You know what I mean? Can you talk <laughs> about the process that, you know, that came about for having the folks uh, join you on this team? Yeah, I was uh, thrilled to have Roma Willis and Chris Marquez play the lead roles. And we also had some amazing performances from Bruce Altman and, and yeah. um, Frank Cartwright and yep. you know, the others. And um, we were just so fortunate. The the first the actor that we had was the script. People just loved the script. So when we sent the script out to our cast and directors, uh, they were just getting such great interest from really good actors because they love their characters and the story. I co-wrote the script with Jason Ronstadt, and so that was our first uh, ticket for success. So we were getting all these good actors in, and, and they were coming in to read, and uh, you know, we sifted through all of them, and slowly and very clearly, Chris and Rumor were shining. They were coming, you know, they were just, just, just shining above the rest, and um, when I met them, they, they just uh, just loved the story and they really understood the characters. And uh, you know, I had long discussions with both of them. And, and you know, with Chris, um, you know, we were very careful not to fall into the pit of doing some sort of a stereotypical role of Duncan. We wanted his character to be so honest that anyone who has someone in their lives with autism would watch the film and say, "Wow, this is." my cousin, this is my nephew, this is my brother, you know, just someone that is so relatable and true to autism. So every time, every little moment uh, that would happen in, the, in, in during filming, we would say, hmm, but Duncan really do this? Would he really react to this? I didn't want the story to dictate his um, behavior. I wanted the, his behavior to dictate his story and, and the surroundings. So that was something that we were really, really 
careful about. Uh, with Rumor, you know, we had discussions about Rumor uh, with her character, and she brought a lot to the table with her experiences and her past. She really delved into this character and uh, transformed, you know, and and became as we started filming, I saw her become this character off the page, and she brought such a gritty, multi-dimensional um, feel to this character. And then we just had a great time. Uh, just, you know, bringing the story out. You know, everyone who worked on the film, from the lead to the supporting cast to the crew, you know, we were not, it was not just like, oh, we're just going to make a film. We all truly believed that we were creating something special. And um, that was our uh, momentum throughout the entire process to be as honest and, and as real as possible. We wanted to make an entertaining film. We wanted to have fun. We wanted the audience to go on a real road trip with these two individuals and at every turn we wanted the interaction to be honest and and just real you know one of the things that I'm really struck by is how real it really is Um, let's talk about some of the misunderstandings about autism for a minute and I think you and I were talking about um, you know I was sharing with you that you know probably about Uh, nine or ten years ago we did our first campaign on autism in America and uh, and and back then you know when I think about it you know I believe that the number back then was one in 500 uh, children are born Um, now let's fast forward Uh, how about an update on that because that's certainly not the case today is it yeah I think now it's like one in 68 yes yes yeah Um, um, and I want to ask you, I mean, there's so much in the film. What do you think um, are some of the greatest challenges that, you know, uh, that folks that have autism are face right now I- in our modern contemporary society? What are some of the challenges, misunderstandings? You know, it's, uh, you know, while I was prepping to make this film, I've met so many families and went to conferences and read and, you know, one of the things that uh, I spoke with Temple Grandin uh, several times before I made the film, and one of the things she told me was, you know, when you meet someone with autism, you've met one person with autism, meaning there's such a diverse um, array of characteristics that you can't say this person is autistic, so then this whole group of people are the same way, because each person is so dynamically different, and then they're on different parts of the spectrum. So I think the problem is that when someone becomes labeled with the term autism, they all get kind of grouped into the same category and put aside. I feel like one of the dangers is that in our society that we are, once you get labeled with, you know, whether it's autism or any sort of uh, disability, you get marginalized and you get stereotyped. And... They see it as, you know, it's something, oh, this person cannot live up to this expectation or cannot perform a certain thing. Well, sure, there's certain uh, limitations that, uh, you know, I have because of my physical disabilities or someone with autism or someone with some some other condition. But instead, it's, it's important to look at each individual as an individual and see what they can offer because each one of these individuals will have a gift, a trait, a skill, a talent that can be really viable and can truly be an asset. So, you know, in the case of the film, you know, Duncan has autism, but it's not him who needs the saving. In fact, it's Maya who is struggling in her life because of all her demons. And through the interaction with Duncan, her life is transformed, and she's reborn, and she grows these radiant wings, and she's a whole new person. And we see that Duncan, who is just living his life by himself, all of a sudden has this amazing transformative effect on her life. So I think it's important uh, to really, you know, look at each individual and see what they can offer before just grouping them all into this one category. Absolutely. We're going to take a short break in a minute, um, and we'll come back and we'll talk about Mila for a minute. Because what are the odds in the odd way home? What are the odds that that two people would be characterized with 
what I believe is two of the fastest growing segments of misunderstanding in our population. One is abuse uh, to women, and the other, as we said, there are many, many faces to autism. You know, what is happening today in the world that really shines a light on the odd way home being clearly one of the only ways home? Let's take a short break, everyone. For more information, please go ahead and go to theoddwayhome.com. And by the way, we've got a DVD we're going to be giving away, Benny, when we come back. Go to theoddwayhome.com website. Take a look. There's a lot of information about the cast, about the team. Uh, you can read a little bit about what Rajiv is talking about here. Uh, much more information, but also you can go um, to a YouTube channel that Rajiv has as well. Uh, and we'll tell you how to do that. Many, many very, 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 very informative films about what goes on, what are the misunderstandings, but also more more importantly, what can we do about it? What can we do about it? What is the level of understanding that each, each of us might have so that we can truly shine a light of beauty on people that may be different, but not less than? We'll be right back with the show. Preceding audio was via a Skype call. Are you ready for a radical shift in your way of being? Are you seeking a more deeply connected and fulfilling life? Awakened Living Radio is a show dedicated to helping you embrace a life filled with profound peace, connection, and happiness. T.J. Woodward is passionate about helping you find your clarity, balance, and purpose. Join co-host T.J. Woodward and Dr. Pat Basile on the first Monday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific Time for Awakened Living Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. If you are one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com. Or call 866 903 6463. That's 866-903-MIND. The following audio is via a Skype call. Hey 
Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's so great for uh, all of you to be tuning us in, turning us on. Um, you know, if you have any questions for Rajiv today, if you want to know more about this, if you if you have information or comment that you want to share with us, please go ahead and do it. We have an 800 number, 1-800-930-2819. Um, we're so thrilled to have Rajiv joining us here today and, you know, the director, co-writer, uh, the odd way home.com. And as a matter of fact, you know, there's so much in this film, um, that it goes beyond, I think, Rajiv, what you intended. There's so much in this film that we can talk about because one of the things I've said, and we'll talk, we'll talk about, you know, Mila for a, for a bit here. There's so much in this film that perhaps you, you thought about, but maybe didn't think about. And I'd love to hear your take on it. That takes a look at another side of struggle in our country. And that's the other side of, you know, drugs, alcohol and abuse to women. And, you know, it, it was beautiful to see the journey and what happens with this. And you talked a bit about it, you, you know, earlier, but I wanted to really get some insider information from you. I mean, did you sit there and consciously, you know, create the, you know, Mila's character from that point of view? I'd love to know how you came up with that because it is, it is again, you know, one of the secrets we keep in this country. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I didn't have some sort of master bold plan <laughs> to bring these two, uh, you know, these two kind of individuals together in a, a, a script. I was basically, you know, I, I had um, met lots of folks with autism, and that's how um, I chose the character of Duncan. And then I, from my small town of Las Cruces, New Mexico, uh, quite, uh, you know, protected childhood, I went out to Los Angeles, and I lived in L.A., Five years. I went to film school. I, you know, was working with at the studios and, and met lots of women out there during my time who um, came out there to pursue what, whatever dream, whether it's acting, thing, you know, and who had slipped through the cracks. And these are these are women that came, you know, unscarred, and it's so easy to lose one's footing. And go down the wrong path and take, make a wrong decision. Uh, you know, people that I had met and friends I had. And it's really saddening because these, these kind of addictions and, mm -hmm. uh, abuse can really take over one's life. And what I noticed was a lot of them uh, feel shameful and like it's, it's something that they brought upon themselves and it becomes a secret. Like you said, they, they want to hide it. They don't want to seek help or go out and try to fight it. It's something they try to control themselves and it gets worse and worse and worse. And, you know, I wanted to create a character who is in this similar, mm -hmm. uh, this similar world, but I wanted to show no matter how dark and desperate the situation gets, there's a way out. Mm -hmm. And the way out is to, you know, take an initial step to say, this is not my fault. I, I can fight this. And then, opening up your heart and your life to, you know, a new potential. And then she meets Duncan and she's really able to be reborn. So when you see Maya in the beginning of the film yeah. and then you compare her to what she is at the end of the film, it is a dynamically um, mm -hmm. a huge change in who she is as a person mm -hmm. from just her physical appearance but also from the, the way she resonates with the world and what she's able to give back. She, she starts out from this really selfish, angry, bitter, frustrated self to someone who is so caring and giving mm -hmm. um, to Duncan. Mm. So that's, and, that's kind of where my... I love from. it. I, and, you know, I, I have to... I, I was so interested. I watched a film and then, and then I thought, Maya, her name is Maya. And I thought... Oh my gosh. I mean, it, you know, I don't know how much you know about this show, but for many of the listeners listening, if I it, it, we're talking about the name of one of the main characters right of the film Maya, and we know what Maya represents. You know, many of us understand, you know, what and I don't know if you did that on purpose. You picked the you, you know, you picked a, no, a think, goddess of Maya illusion. Was... I think Maya was the first name that popped into my head, and <laughs> and she stuck as Maya. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, we're talking about clearly a character, you know, a name that represents, you know, the mother of creation, so to speak, in certain uh, spiritual practices and traditions. Um, and in a sense, you know, as we watch the film and we see Maya's evolution, you know, there is a, this way that Maya does move from illusion to a level of creation. And I was so fascinated by that. I'm probably getting way more into the film than probably most people, but I was really struck by it because the lesson we learn from what happens when we leave behind some of the darkness, right? Um, What shows up is nothing short of exquisite love. And that journey was beautiful. Um, How would you describe it, you know, not just in the film, but in the state of affairs, how would you describe the way you characterize the relationship between Maya and Duncan? Well, I mean, you know, to touch on uh, a little bit of something I mentioned earlier, it's just yeah. that, you know, we meet uh, people in our lives and in general, especially what's going on in, you know, America right now, and there's so much division, um, it yeah. seems, uh, racially or culturally or religiously, yeah. and, and we make judgments about people so quickly based on all these characteristics and labels of color, race, color, uh, you know, religion, all these things, yeah. and... I just wanted to create these two people. You know, you see Maya, if you see Maya on the road, you see this beaten, angry uh, woman, and you just want to say, oh, wow, she's really, she has problems. I don't want to get involved. You, you see Duncan, he's probably in his own world drawing his maps and, and uh, <laughs> isn't making eye contact, and you, and most people might be like, oh, there's something wrong with him, but I want to steer clear of him. But in this in this situation, each person opens up their hearts and looks at each each person without any free judgment. And this this uh, relationship forms. And, uh, you know, I think that's very important and that's something that, um, you know, I wanted to show that we all, you know, everyone involved in this film, we wanted to create these two characters that are coming from such different worlds and that kind of uh, uh, strife or stereotypes, and we blow all those away. We, you know, cleanse them of any of these labels and stereotypes, and we see them as who they are. This is Duncan. He's got this great view of the world. He'll make you laugh, and he'll surprise you, and he's totally honest. And here's Maya. She's got a beautiful heart. She wants to sing, and she wants to be loved, and she, she takes care of Duncan like she he was, um, her brother, and we wouldn't know any of that if we judged them at face value. And uh, so that's how we uh, came about to really create the relationship between the two. I think the relationship is really important for a lot of reasons. I, I was reading one of the comments that somebody made uh, about the film, you know, and they and I think the comment was that the fact that Duncan is actually autistic seems secondary to the story. And, yeah, actually, you know, we uh, don't even use the word in the film. It's never mentioned in the film. Never mentioned, right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yet at the same time, um, what I love about it is that it's through what you show in that relationship that gives us a solution in society, you see. See, this is what I'm really struck by in, in, in all of this, is this really gives us a solution in society. And so what might that be? Well, maybe one of the things is if we look at the way these amazing people come together and come together in a way that is not filled with judgment, you know, it's not filled with future consequences of worry. You know, it's not necessarily filmed with anything but I'm going to be here in service of you and I'm going to be here to let you know you are worthy. And I would love for you to talk about that because both both of these scenarios in life, you know, whether you're autistic or not, but if you're different and, and if you're battered, clearly there are issues that go on of I'm not understood and I'm actually of no value. And I would love for you to talk about how you were able to weave that together so that those characteristics came to the forefront. Yeah, I think one of the things is, you know, most people have um, um, things cast upon them 
on their lives that are of no control to themselves. If it's a disability, well, they didn't choose it. If it's, you know, violence and even addiction, well, no one chooses to become an addict. It just, right. it, it, it's a mistake and it happens. And then once right. you, you know, slowly go down a slippery rope, you're, you know, deep in there and you're fighting to get out of it. So if we, if we judge these people based on these situations that they can't truly control, well, that's really unfair and that's unfortunate. So, why don't we try to see who they are um, independent of that? And then we might be able to see, oh, well, she's really funny, or she's really talented, or she's really this. Oh, this is what this person is. Everyone has something to offer. And so I think we do ourselves a disservice if we pass people by without um, taking a look at them, uh, you know, we need to open up the curtain and see, okay, what's really behind there? And not just within two seconds, oh, this person looks like she's a drug addict, so I don't want to do anything with her. Um, so I think that's, that's what's truly important uh, for in our lives, in our society. And if we can understand that, uh, and that, that would make tremendous change, I think, in mm-hmm. the way we live our lives and, and uh, society in general. Absolutely. We're going to take a short break when we come back. You know, we're going to we're going to look at some of the other characters in the film because I have to tell you, they are characters, boy. Uh, and, you know, for those of you out there, if you want to find out more, as I've said before, uh, we want to make sure that you get to the website um, and, and you take a look, theoddwayhome.com. Um, when we come back, Uh, What about that, Veronica Cartwright? Let's have a short break, everyone. When we come back, we're also going to give a copy of the DVD away to one of you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the show. Preceding audio was via a Skype call. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. What if there was no right or wrong way to be a great parent? Join Access Consciousness facilitator Glenna Rice as she and Dr. Pat invite you to be the questionable parents you truly are and empower you to know and give the awareness required to create ease and joy with your children. Join Dr. Pat and Glenna as they focus on parenting for the modern family. Tune in every month to the Dr. Pat Show on air and online at TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you feeling broken from your relationships? Are you second-guessing yourself about friends, family, and lovers? Tune in to the hit show that's creating a buzz in the love-seeking community. Love Seeker Radio, finding love for your authentic self with renowned love coach Heather Lynn. Tired of dissatisfying relationships? Kiss them goodbye and power up your love seeker energy. Coach Heather Lynn reminds you that you can just be you, the beautiful and perfect you. Visit heatherlynncoaching.com to learn more. Calling all dreamers. Are you living your dream life? Actualize your possibilities with Life Coaching Radio and your host, Deb Stetzer. If you're feeling stuck in a rut, Deb is here to help you turn your dreams into a reality. Life Coaching Radio. Dream it, live it, be it. To learn more about Deb, visit www.mylifecoach.us. In retirement, will you have enough money to live life on your terms? Everyone has retirement questions, so ask Ameriprise Financial Advisor Jeff Packman about the new Confident Retirement Approach. You and Jeff can break down retirement planning step-by-step to get the real answers you need. 
Call Jeff Packman, financial advisor, today at 425-453-0272. Office is located at 601 108th Avenue Northeast, Suite 1800, Bellevue, Washington, 98004. The competent retirement approach is not a guarantee of future financial results. Investment advisory products and services are made available through Ameriprise Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Ameriprise Financial Services, Inc., member of FINRA and SIPC. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Patshow.com for listening times in your area. The following audio is via a Skype call. Here we are with our backs against the wall. We've got big city dreams, but we don't move from the outside. Hey everyone, welcome back, welcome back. You know, Benny, let's do this. I'd love to give a copy of the DVD for the film to our first caller, and it's The Odd Way Home. What an incredible film. I mean, it is just crazy good uh rajiv joining us here today but let's do this 1-800-930-2819 1-800-930-2819 uh and you know for those of you out there uh first caller benny will take your information and we will get you the dvd uh and we ask that those of you listening to please get the word out uh, as I said before, if you want to find out more about the film, you can go ahead and go to The Odd Way. So this is really what we want you to do. Go to the website if you could. Go to The Odd Way Home, theoddwayhome.com. Uh, Rajiv, now you have a personal website. Can you please give that out so people can find out more about you directly? Yes. Uh, so this is my personal uh, uh, website, rajology.com, R-A-J-O-L-O-G-Y. Uh, it just has some of my other work and uh, email, if you want to drop me an email. And, uh, yeah, theoddwayhome.com. And then the film is also available on iTunes, on Amazon, Hulu, and other VOD services like DirecTV mm-hmm. and uh, on DVD. And... Uh, We'd love to show the film also uh, in other cities. I know we talked about possibly mm-hmm. Seattle. So uh, I've screened the film at festivals across the country, and there's not a better experience than to watch it on a big screen with an audience and yeah. just see how they uh, react to the film. is It's just so special. Oh, yeah. I wanted to take some time because I, I definitely don't want to leave out the rest of the cast. Uh, you know, I mean, some of these people that you've been able to pull together, actually all of them, you know, they are iconic in their own way. When I start to think about Veronica Cartwright, I, I can't help myself. I'm brought back to one of the best sci-fi films on the planet and her role in that. And, of course, that's Alien. And, you know, here we are fast forward to this film. And I wanted to talk about her character for a minute, as well as Bruce Altman. Uh, but but the moments that we are with her on screen are unforgettable. And I would love for you to talk about this and, and her role in the film. Yeah, so I I was so blessed to have uh, these actors in the film. All of them were just amazing. Veronica... Uh, came on board and uh, we shot her scene on the last day of, uh, on physical photography and I remember we, we spoke and we Skyped uh, early on but that day I picked her up from the hotel stayed at the set and we spent you know maybe 40, 40 minutes in the car just having a wonderful conversation and she spoke to me about uh, working with Hitchcock and Jim Cameron and, and all these huge directors and I was like oh my god I have to direct this woman who's been directed by these icons and she asked me some great questions, and we talked about the character and and whatnot. And then we uh, we uh, get to set, and um, she was just such a pro. And we do the we do the first take, and she just blows it out of the water. And everyone, the entire crew, is silent. Uh, I remember uh, my my good friend producer Peter too. She just turns to me from across the set with like wide eyes, and I was like, 
Wow. And Veronica just walks up to me and says, uh, Rush, uh, what do you think? Is that okay? Should we try something else? No. Just uh, awestruck. Um, and then we did a few more, and we tried a few different things, and just take after take, she was just, you know, a powerhouse, just blowing it out of the water. So, uh, and in every every theater, every time I've screened the film, during her scene, it is absolutely silent in the theater. And then at the end of the scene, as we dolly away from her, there's this, always I hear this, like, sigh of relief. This is, you know, the audience is releasing their breath because it's been so taut and so intense during that moment when she's on screen. So, um, yeah. It'll, it'll definitely, it'll, it'll get you. It does get you. I mean, and that's really kind of what happens in the film, isn't it? You know, there are those get you moments. I mean, at least for me, that's what I'm sensing. There are get, get you moment after get you moment after get you moment. And what I mean by that is, you know, you take a look. Uh, of course, you know, we take a look at Veronica. But also, we got to talk about Bruce Altman for a minute. You know, many of us have watched Bruce. We've seen him in films. We we look at the way he shows up, and his character had an important role as well, didn't it? Yeah. So Bruce uh, was just such a gentleman. He was. Uh, I, I just loved working with Bruce, and he showed up to set, and it was just, we had such a great bond and a connection. And and um, you know, his role was important because when I was speaking to so many uh, families with autism and, and reading about it, you know, sadly, uh, it seemed like there were many families where it was the, the mother that was raising the child and the father was not in the family. Um, the, you know, it was just too much for many fathers, and, and I thought it was so sad and, not, and unfair. So that's where this guy came from, that, you know, he's a wealthy man, he's a... Uh, well-to-do man, yet he feels like he doesn't want to own up to the responsibility of raising his son because he has autism. And uh, but but the great thing is, by the end of his scene, there's a glimmer of hope in in, in his in his eyes because we see that when he actually meets Duncan and he sees him, and and during that brief period, just a few things that Duncan says, it changes his perception of who he thought his son was. And and there's a little smile because he's like, wow, this is my this is my son. So he's a lot more than what I expected. And so it's an important scene because we we show the kind of uh, presence of fathers in, in the rest of the community, but then we show that oh, their perception can be changed. Well, I mean, this is really sort of a beautiful tapestry that you know you all there have created. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stories, and the relevance of this is really, um, it, it's really touching. And what do I mean by the relevance of it? I mean, whether you're looking at Maya, or whether you're looking at Duncan, or whether you're looking at any of the other characters, characters in the film, you know, the topics and the, you know, the the storyline, as it's called in the film, is so relevant to the storylines of people's lives right now in this country what they're being faced with millions and millions of people. You know, we don't really want to talk about addiction, depression, drugs, alcohol, and yet we're watching suicide after suicide rate just go up. And so while you probably didn't intend to really shine the light on how two people, two of the most unlikely people, came to save one and then the other, isn't that really... The, the the glimmer of hope that we might have for many people, Rajiv. And thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much for having me. One last question. What is your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? I I just say, you know, um, it's a fun, enjoyable movie. I think you should watch it and have fun. And hopefully what you could take away from it is uh, look past people's uh, Exteriors and their stereotypes, and and the find the inner beauty in what each person has to offer before you make a judgment, because you'd be surprised what you might discover. Wow, I love it! Thank you so much for today. Uh, I want to make sure everybody has the website. You go ahead, and you could take a look at the trailers, and you know support the film. 
go to iTunes. You can go to theoddwayhome.com, and it is going to be my Dr. Pat's pick for next month. Uh, and we're going to make sure that all of you know a lot about this film and about what is happening in the world today around relationships and what happens when love shows up. We're going to take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back with The Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Go to thedrpatshow.com or transformationtalkradio.com. We'll be right back. On my knees, oh, I beg, I beg and please sing him. Come out of things I said. Shoot an apple off my head. And a trouble that can be made. The preceding audio was via a Skype call. 